Hi guys, welcome to my new Ashes podcast. As you may or may not know, I have just recently started a podcast dedicated to talk about Arsenal. And this is a little bit of a uh, spin-off of that, as cricket is my second love after football, in terms of sport anyway. And today was the first day of the first Ashes test at Edgebaston. England declared on 393 for 8 and Australia ended the day on 14 without loss. I just wanted to talk about a few things that I noticed from what I saw today. I didn't see the whole day's play, but I've seen and heard enough to make some judgments on it. Firstly, I wanted to talk a little bit about Zach Crawley at the top of the order. Now, Nasser Hussein said something interesting, that on a flat pitch, Crawley can score runs, but on a pitch where the ball's moving a little bit, chances are he'll nick off. I think that's a little bit harsh, but what backs up Nasser's claim is Crawley's first-class record is really not as good as it should be. But when he bats like he did today, he got... 61 I believe it was he looks really really good you know he was up against a pretty good Australian attack I'm not convinced by Boland I've got to say and I'd be a bit more worried if Mitchell Stark was playing I have to be honest but it's still a good Australian bowling lineup and Crawley played really well for 60 But obviously one of his big problems is converting those sort of scores to maybe 120 or 130, which is what England need more from him. But he got England off to a good start, and I think he deserves credit for that. I think one thing I noticed as well, there seemed to be a lot of talk amongst the commentators today that the pitch was flat, and I'm not I'm not entirely convinced it was. To me, throughout the day, and the bits I saw, there were balls that were clearly jumping up a little bit at the batsman. Whereas most of the day, the ball was keeping fairly low, but the odd one would rear up. I think there was a bit in the pitch, actually. I think Mo and Ali could be a factor hopefully tomorrow but also as the game goes on as well you just wonder actually possibly with a bit of uneven bounce in the pitch whether could have done perhaps with Mark Wood but we shall see now we get to the interesting part of the day the declaration I have to be honest, I was not expecting to see England declare on 393 for 8. When I I was out and about for most of the day, I did see bits. But when I saw England were on about 350 for 8, I was just thinking, well, with Root there, hopefully we can get up to 400. Then I heard that Australia were batting. And I just assumed England had been bowled out for 390 yield. And then when I looked, I was amazed to see England had declared. And I thought, well, is that really wise? But you you think about it, and it, it really, to nobody else, that would have made much sense. But to Stokes and McCullum, they are constantly on the attack. And they would have seen an opportunity to try and maybe knock over Warner early, particularly with his record against Broad, and strike a psychological blow to Australia and really let them know that England are coming for them. And I think that's more what the declaration meant, that it was a real signal of intent. It's quite a... It's quite a statement from Stokes and McCullum. And we shall see if it works.